This is Right on the Money with Tom Mosley, founder of Mosley Wealth Management. Our mission at Mosley Wealth Management is to help people make sure they never run out of income the rest of their life and they pay as little as they're legally required to pay in taxes. Since 1995, Tom Mosley and his team have been creating comprehensive custom financial plans to help you preserve what you've earned and pursue what you've envisioned. In retirement, a lot of people have built a great lump sum we call that your lumber yard but you need a blueprint to put that lumber yard into a plan that you can build a retirement house to live in what's on your mind this week southern california the stock market taxes inflation income social security how to ease into the life of your dreams let's discover conservative financial strategies starting right now this is your right on the money radio hour with tom mosley And a very happy weekend to you. You are listening to Right on the Money with Tom Mosley. He is the founder and president of Mosley Wealth Management based right here in Southern California. And I'm your host, Kristen Oakley. And last week we got into a show where we, the title of it was Everything You've Ever Wanted to Know About RMDs But Were Afraid to Ask. And we had so much content to get through that we decided that we needed to do a part two and finish talking about this really important subject. That's exactly right. Required minimum distribution, something where you can not only get taxed on your money, but you could get penalized 25% of what you're supposed to take out. So it's pretty important. So last week, we just sort of laid out the current rules. We talked about the age for required minimum distributions, the different types of accounts that needed to be um, uh, addressed with required minimum distributions. How do you calculate it? It's not a percentage. It's never a percentage. When do you take the first RMD, required minimum distribution? What if you have multiple accounts? What are the penalties? What about inherited accounts? Because they are entirely different when you inherit that account from your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister. So we talked about that. We talked about the current rules, and then we were moving into and started moving into 10 planning ideas for taking those RMDs properly, and we talked about automating your, your distribution so that you don't forget them. We talked about the idea of do we take them early in the year, and what are the benefits of that, or later in the year? You say, isn't there a requirement? Well, go back and listen, but no, there's no requirement as to when you take them out. You just have to take them out, okay? And and that's the main thing. So, so that's where we're at. We're in the we're in, you know, the first two planning ideas we've talked about, and we're ready to to charge into the next eight. Absolutely. Well, and the next one is a really interesting one, Tom. You know, sometimes for folks, they take their RMDs and they're able to use them for something. Maybe you have a big, big vacation that you've been planning for, or you want to give money to, to family or whatnot. For some folks, they don't need that money to live off of, and it becomes more of a burden because of the tax implications of taking it, and yet it's required. But there is a strategy known as a QCD, a Qualified Charitable Distribution. I'd love for you to share about that and how someone can actually use a QCD to count for their RMD. You know, way back when, when we didn't have electronic games, we used to play what was called hot potato. <laughs> and and it was like you couldn't be holding that hot potato. You had to get it to somebody else until the music stopped or something like that. Well, I think of a QCD as you're sitting there in the scenario you just developed, Kristen, with a 401k or an IRA, you're 73 years old, you have to take a distribution that year when you turn 73, and you don't need it. Mm -hmm. You don't want it. You don't have anybody to give it to, and you don't want to pay the taxes on it. Right. Well, I always think of the QCD if you're 70 and a half or older. Everybody listening? Everybody listening, 70 and a half or older, you can actually give that qualified charitable distribution to a 501c3 nonprofit corporation like your church, like your mosque, your synagogue, like your favorite charity, like the Sierra Club. We just had one recently where the Sierra Club got $60,000 oh, wow. in one year from somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the way it works. You give it directly from your IRA 
to the charity. It's a qualified distribution in that they tr they trace it and that counts toward your required minimum distribution. How much tax do you pay on it? Nothing. But you get the deduction as though you've taken it out and you don't have to take additional RMD out. So it's a really win-win situation. I would say, because, you know, we've been around for 29 years. We didn't just, you know, start doing this recently and know everything. <laughs> but we've been doing this for 29 years. And I, I know the biggest hang-up is you really have to work with your tax advisor because the IRS hasn't, uh, you know, they haven't gotten awake to QCDs yet because mm -hmm. there's on the 1099 you get, it looks like a regular 1099 and you've got to tag that with your tax advisor and tell them, no, it's a qualified charitable distribution and there's a specific way to file that. Now we, we help tax professionals every year, multiple times file QCDs because it's a win for the charity, a win for you. And I guess the only people who are losing are really the U S government. And we don't really care about that right now because <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they would waste the money anyway. So, so yeah. you need to check out now, remember 70 and a half don't, you know, what if I'm 69? You're not 70 and a half. What if I'm sick? Well, you know what? You get it. Okay. Yep. You've got to be older. You've got to be ready to take it out and you've got to be, know who you want to give it to, but a QCD might really work for you in an idea of distributing that required minimum distribution. And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the limit for 2024, it's $104,000 of QCDs that you can give away and you can give it to multiple charities. Correct. That's exactly right. You you know, it's over a hundred thousand people. You, it was used to be a little. It creeps up every year, mm -hmm. and and last year it was a hundred thousand. This year it's a little over a hundred thousand. But that's a really good way. You say, well, I wish I had a hundred thousand dollars to give away. Well, we're not talking to you. OK, but we're talking to those people out there who have a very large 401k or IRA and you really don't know what to do with it, but you don't want to get taxed on it. That's right. the biggest thing. Now, I want to go back to why we exist at Mosley Wealth Management. Now, we're building a company here that's going to be around for 100 years, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to be around for a long, long time in the way we structure things, the way we do things. But when I started 29 years ago, I started because I wanted to make sure that people never ran out of income the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the thing that was taking people's income faster than anything else in retirement was taxes. Yep. So we tacked on to our mission, never run out of income for the rest of their life and pay as little as you're legally required to pay in taxes. Now, if your person that you're working with is not doing that for you, then, then you need a new person. I'll just tell you that because taxes can absolutely kill you. And if I can save somebody bumping into a higher tax bracket, bumping into a higher Medicare payment, bumping into a higher social security where your social security gets taxed. If I can save you those dollars, those are just month, that's just dollars put back in your pocket in retirement for you to enjoy. And that's why we exist for the next hundred years. We're going to be here helping make sure people never run out of income and pay as little as they're legally required to pay in taxes. Such an important mission. And if you want to get started to figure out how you can do those things in your own life. This is why we offer the complimentary retirement blueprint. That number to call to get yours is 888-930-5609. And of course, we'll be talking more about that throughout today's show. Moving down this list of the planning ideas for how to take your RMDs properly, the next thing on the list is strategizing your withdrawals. And this is especially critical if you're someone who has multiple retirement accounts. So Tom, can you speak to that? Yeah, which account is performing well? Which account needs to be rebalanced because it's, you know, you've had one, not all stock moves forward, not all investments move forward at the same pace every year. And so rebalancing is a good thing to do. And one way sometimes to, to take your required minimum distribution is to look at that account and see what has performed really, really, really well. And maybe instead of rebalancing the whole account, just take the required minimum distribution out of that investment within the account that has performed well. That serves as a way of rebalancing. But you've 
got to strategize that withdrawal so that you know how much to take and when to take it. Do we take it at the first part of the year? Is the market this year, is it just exploding up, 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 up? Well, maybe you want to wait and take it at the end of the year because the amount is set at the last day of the previous year. It doesn't change mm-hmm. during the year. So, so strategizing that withdrawal so that it's to your benefit, if you're going to have to take X amount of dollars out and the market is, is dropping like a lead balloon, you probably need to take it out sooner rather than later. But if the market is going up, you may want to leave that money in there and allow it to grow and take it at the very last possible moment. So making a strategy, having a strategy as to how to take out those withdrawals is very important as well. For sure. And it's it's like you said, it's knowing how much to take, from which account, when to take it. And this is also another argument for why it's important to consolidate your accounts. If you are someone who has multiple old accounts floating around out there and you maybe have an old 401k that you've forgotten about, guess what? When it comes RMD age, you need to make sure you're handling the RMDs from all of your accounts properly. So, so important to have that, that strategy in place. It's We just ran into a situation where somebody came to us as a client. They told us we had everything that they had and they realized about when they turned RMD age of 73, they had a one another $140,000 in an IRA somewhere else. Mm. Well, guess what happened when they turned 74? That other advisor who, you know, pretty much went to sleep on their account because he lost most of their account, never talked to them about their RMD. We never knew about it. And so guess what? The client was short mm-hmm. on their RMD. So it's really important. Cons- you mentioned the word consolidation. It's just one of the things we do when we pull together and build a retirement blueprint for you. We consolidate everything. And even if we're not managing everything, we need to know about it because if we're going to if you're going to be the conductor and your drum section is going to be sort of going rogue on you and they're going to be doing their own thing you're not going to have as good of an orchestra as if one conductor is conducting all the orchestra think about that when it comes to RMDs everything needs something coming out of it even if something doesn't come out of that particular account hey we can help you with this but you've got to call us and that number to call to get your complimentary retirement blueprint is 888-930-5609 this is for no cost no charge no obligation it's simply an invitation to be able to come in and meet with one of the all-star advisors of Mosley Wealth Management to see how they can help and serve you when we come back we're going to continue this discussion of of planning ideas for making sure you take your RMDs properly. Stay with us. For your own no-cost retirement blueprint, call Tom Mosley of Mosley Wealth Management, 888-930-5609. Will you outlive your money? It's a scary thought, but it's a real concern for many people. In our opinion, that's why it's crucial to have a solid retirement plan in place. We believe that with proper planning, you can work towards making your money last as long as you do. Don't wait until it's too late to start thinking about your financial future. Call Tom Mosley and the team at Mosley Wealth Management today to learn how we can help you create a retirement plan that can potentially help you obtain peace of mind and security for years to come. Don't let the fear of running out of money in retirement keep you up at night. Take control of your financial future today by calling 888-930-5609. That's 888-930-5609. Welcome back to Ride on the Money with Tom Mosley. I'm your host, Kristen Oakley. And today, Tom and I are continuing our conversation about everything you ever wanted to know about RMDs, but were afraid to ask. We've been going through some planning ideas for taking those RMDs properly, your required minimum distributions, which, you know, Tom, I haven't said this on the show for a while, but one of my mentors in this business used to call the RMD really mean and dastardly (laughs) or rotten miserable, disgusting. I've also heard retirement mass destruction, but what they really stand for are those required minimum distributions, which currently the age is age 73. So how do you take these RMDs in a way that best serves you? And we're going through several options. One of the things that needs to be considered is the tax brackets that you're currently in. So talk a little bit about that. 
Well, sometimes you can't do anything about it. They're going to push you into a higher tax bracket. But if you can do something about it, you need to be awake to it. Now, here's here's what I'm talking about. You're you're asleep in the bedroom of your financial life and you go to sleep on RMDs. And so you just take them out of your IRA. But you've taken other money out of that IRA or you plan on taking other money out of that IRA later in the year. That could push you into a higher tax bracket. And you say, well, I'm just I'm asleep in the bedroom. But that might also affect what's happening happening in the living room. Mm -hmm. The living room is your Medicare because it might push you into a situation where you're paying more for your Part B or your Part D, and it might push, and those rates go up quite significantly and quite quickly there when it comes to the, it's called IRMA, and and it's something that you would pay for Medicare. Your RMDs could push you into a higher IRMA bracket on your Medicare. They also, if you take those RMDs, it comes out as taxable income, and then you have capital gains. Well, right now, up to almost $100,000, you don't have to pay any taxes on capital gains. Yeah, I said that right, if you're married filing jointly. And so you zero is the best tax bracket that's out there. Mm -hmm. But if you take those RMDs and it pushes you over that limit, then anything you sell out of an after-tax account and you have capital gains from what you've sold, that could create a capital gains tax for you. So what you do in the bedroom is going to impact the living room, is going to impact the family room, is going to impact every other area of your financial life potentially. So the way you, you've got to consider your tax brackets and where it pushes you from a tax standpoint and that that's one of the reasons we love to do planning way ahead of time mm -hmm. so that you know, you don't get surprised by something. Exactly. You know, we say this on the show a lot. Uh, of course, how you make a decision in one area of your financial life can and will affect all the others. And I love that you use the house analogy, Tom, because that fits right into what having a blueprint is all about. You have to have the solid foundation, the proper plan in place ahead of time so that when it comes time for something like your RMDs, it's not a shock, it's not a surprise, and it doesn't have negative consequences throughout the rest of your financial life. Exactly. I mean, I mean, that's the whole thing. And, and that's the difference in knowing a lot about finances and knowing and reading up on the internet a lot about finances or TikTok or wherever you might get your information. You're only as good as the person giving you that advice. And if that is an isolated incident, like you say, Kristen, in one room of your house, then your blueprint is messed up because mm -hmm. everything in that house needs to fit. And something you do in one area can mess you up in another area if you're not careful. For sure, which is a perfect segue to the next thing that we want to talk about. You know, Tom, I know that you all work with a lot of folks who are single, but you also work with a lot of married couples. And there are some spousal considerations because if you're both age 73 or older, guess what? You both have to be taking those RMDs and it's important to coordinate those. And, and that can, can add an extra layer of planning that's needed. Yeah, it's a, it's a both and, not an either or. And for the spouse... Each individual retirement account, that's why the I stands for individual retirement account. If it's in the husband's name, the wife's name, whoever's name it's in, that person has to take an RMD. And you can't take all of the money out of the husband's account or the wife's account if you're married. It's got to come out of each individual account by the name of the person who owns the account. I always tell people, Kristen, that like you and Charlie, if Charlie's got one and Kristen's got one, it's Kristen's as long as you're this side of the dirt, mm -hmm. okay? And then when you're no longer this side of the dirt, it becomes Charlie's okay in most cases so so that's what you really need to look at is how's what my spouse is making going to impact what we're doing and and here's a case where I just ran into this week I had one spouse the the, the gentleman was eight years older than the wife and he'd already retired mm -hmm. the wife had not retired and she's making really really good money so what they're faced this situation is they're in a really high tax bracket and now along comes the guy and he's got to start taking his rmd to drive them further into that really high tax bracket mm -hmm. but you know what there's nothing you can do about it it's the penalty we pay to live in the united states because that's the law and you've got to do it remember our goal as a company is to get you to pay as little as you're legally required to pay in taxes. But if you're legally required to pay them, you have to pay them. We just want to minimize those as much as we can. So you've got to consider what's my spouse making. 
because yeah. that's really important. Absolutely. And it can it really can have far reaching effects for both of you. So you, you can't just look at your stuff, you got to look if you're married, you got to look at your spouses as well and, and coordinate together for sure. And, and let me say something right there. A lot of people come back and they say, well, what if we didn't file jointly? Mm. That's, that's really not my uh, sweet spot. That's something you need to talk to your tax advisor. Mm -hmm. But I've never talked to a tax advisor that felt that there was any drastic major advantage. And I know people are going to call in and say, well, I know of an, an advantage in your situation. Okay, fine. But I've never talked to, talk to tax professionals who really thought there was one advantage one way over the other. Whatever you're doing, you're probably doing for a reason. If you're both filing single or if you're filing married, filing joint, you probably can't change something and take a big advantage over that. Yeah. Well, it just stresses the importance of having that solid plan in place. Again, if you would like to make sure that you have your complimentary retirement blueprint that accounts for all these different aspects of your financial life, of course, we're we're focusing on these RMDs and on taxes today, but this touches everything from your income to legacy planning to really making sure that you have a plan to help you achieve your dreams. We invite you to pick up the phone and call 888-930-5609. Next up on our list, Tom, investment rebalancing. Now, this is really interesting. I, I would love for you to explain a little bit more about how you could use your RMDs as an opportunity to rebalance your portfolio. Now, we touched on this in the first segment just a little bit, but let's say in your portfolio, in your IRA, you have four investments. And through the year, one of them stays the same. Maybe two of them stay the same. One of them goes up a little bit. But this other one over here, number four, it really has a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. Now, financial planning advice says that it's really good every periodic uh, six month or one year at least to rebalance and to bring everything back to where it's a balance because next year, number four might not be the winner. Number one or number two might be the winner. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting with a portfolio in your IRA of four things and one of them has had a great year, rather than rebalancing the entire portfolio and doing a lot of buying and selling within there, doesn't really hit you with taxes because it's in an IRA and you're not going to get hit with capital gains. But one way to rebalance is to take that growth out of the one that's really grown and take that as the distribution. You can go in and select what gets distributed. And so you take it out of that pocket mm -hmm. of investment. So rebalancing, you can, you can accomplish two things at once by taking your RMD and rebalancing at the same time by coordinating them and using them together. And that's so important to think about, Tom, because, you know, everyone wants to know how do I buy low, sell high, right? Right. It's by doing what you just described. It's by looking at which one has earned more, which asset class is doing better, and you sell it when it is taking over more of the portfolio. That's how you sell high. The hard part is not to get greedy and think, oh, it's doing so well. I want to keep it growing, <laughs> right? Wow. And then not and then miss that opportunity. So that's that's a really smart way to think about it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm told I'm not a big gambler. I do like to play roulette just to watch people be crazy. But um, I, I'm told that people, their problem is they don't know when to walk away. Exactly. They don't know when to say, okay, I've got a gain here. Let me take that gain and be happy with it. And, and I, I have also so many times run into people, Kristen, that they, they sold something and then they keep looking at it. Mm. And I, I tell him, I said, look, if you sell something, quit looking at it. You right. know, don't worry about spilt milk. Yep. There's nothing you can do about it. Just move on to the next investment and make another good investment. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's another thing on the list that can be done with your RMDs. Roth conversions. This is a big one. A Roth conversion is when you have that IRA, that every penny of that has to be taxed at regular income. And you'd like to get it into a bucket that was not taxed ever again. Mm -hmm. Well, that's possible. It's possible through a, through a process called Roth conversion. Now you're going to have to pay the tax, but you can choose to pay the tax when you want to pay it. I call it your tax plan versus the government's tax plan. So if you start a program and we do this with literally hundreds of our clients, prime time to do it, not the only time, but prime time to do it is 59 and a half until you reach 73, which is now the required minimum distribution age. Every penny you convert from a regular IRA to a Roth 
that is never taxed again. You're listening? In your lifetime, in your spouse's lifetime, if you are married. If you're not married or if you are married, you leave it to the kids in their lifetime. It is never taxed again. Even the growth is not taxed. It's a wonderful thing. I want to talk about that a little bit more in the, in the third segment. But if you're if some of these ideas you say, well, my person is not talking to me about these things, then it's costing you tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And you need to take the time to call us and get on our schedule and meet with us and let us put together the sketch of a retirement blueprint for you so you can see how you can save tax dollars. Tom, I couldn't have said it better myself. The reality is if you're already working with another advisor and they are not having these kinds of strategic tax planning conversations with you, it's time to get a second opinion. We invite you, you can do that by calling 888-930-5609 and schedule your time to come in and receive your very own complimentary retirement blueprint. We'll be back with more on Right on the Money with Tom Mosley right after this. Do you know how you'll generate income from your investments along with your social security in retirement? In our opinion, it's never too early to start the income planning process for your future. An income plan can help you work towards creating a steady stream of income to support you throughout your retirement years. Don't leave your financial future to chance. Take control today and start income planning for your retirement. Call the team at Mosley Wealth Management so we can help you design a complimentary written income plan to help you live the retirement you've always wanted. Call 888-930-5609. That's 888-930-5609. With today's rising interest rate environment, have you considered refinancing your retirement? When interest rates go low, you might be able to refinance your homes, your car loans, and even your credit card rates because it could help you keep more of your own money each month. When interest rates go up, it may make sense to refinance your retirement. Higher interest rates could provide income opportunities that you may not be aware of. What works for your portfolio during low interest rate environments may not work for you in a high interest rate environment. So find out if a retirement refi could work better for you. Don't look down at today's higher interest rates. Find out if a retirement refi could work for you. Call Tom Mosley of Mosley Wealth Management at 888-930-5609. That's 888-930-5609. With rising interest rates, it might be time for you to refi your retirement. Welcome back to Right on the Money with Tom Mosley. He is the founder and president of Mosley Wealth Management, and I'm your host, Kristen Oakley. We are having a great conversation today, helping you know how to navigate your required minimum distributions. But before we get back to that conversation, Tom, I know that each week we've got lots of folks calling in. Folks are coming in to meet with you and the team. People are watching the television show, and they want more. They are hungry for more, and you've got some great resources. I'd love for you to share that with our listeners so that they can stay connected with with us throughout the rest of the week. To find all of the dates and times for our seminars and our workshops, you need to go to mosleywealthmanagement.com, M-O-S-L-E-Y, wealthmanagement.com. There's a tab there for seminars. And then if some of you are listening today and you say, well, I'd like a, some more information on this. Well, last week's show was all about RMDs too. Mm -hmm. And so so I, I guess you'd call it RMDs one, and this is RMDs two. Right. <laughs> and to find all of our past radio shows and TV shows, the ones you and I do, Kristen, and our weekly Ease into Retirement video podcast, you need to head over to our YouTube channel, and that's Mosley Wealth Management YouTube channel. And when you get on there, if you like it, like it, subscribe, and you'll be notified, and then make some good comments. That would help us a lot. So, so please help us help let it help us help you exactly. get educated about financial knowledge. Yes, I'm still smiling about that story of the couple that wanted to have their picture taken taken with you, Tom, because what I love, and I've said this on the TV show when we're on there before, is what you see on TV is what you're going to get in person. And I think it's so rewarding when folks can come and meet you and the team in person and see that you are real and <laughs> that what they've seen on television, what they've heard on the radio is, is consistent with who they get to meet in person. So that's a real testament to you and your team. The guy who walked up this week was named Mike, and Mike walked up to me in Cyprus, and he said, you're the same guy here that you are on the radio. Mm -hmm. He said, really nice to meet you. And he said, I've been listening to you for a year. So wow. thank you, Mike yes. and Debbie, and uh, glad you guys came to the seminar. Come 
learn, listen. It, I tell you what, it's your money and it's your life and your enjoyment. And I want it to be the best it can be. Absolutely. And we should just remind you that these events are completely free to you. But we do ask that you go ahead and register ahead of time to make sure the team has enough seats and enough materials on hand. So again, to look at all of the events available and go ahead and register, simply visit MosleyWealthManagement.com. That's M-O-S-L-E-Y WealthManagement.com. Well, we started the conversation before the break, Tom, about Roth conversions as being a planning idea for taking RMDs properly. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I absolutely do, because a lot of people get to the age of 73 now is the button that you hit where you have to take RMDs. And they say, when I turn 73, I'm going to put all of the money that I have to take out for required minimum distributions into a Roth IRA. Now, if I had a buzzer, it would be like this. Ah, it's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen because the money that comes out for RMD has to go into an after-tax account unless, unless you have earned income and then you can put up to $7,500, $8,000 each year into a Roth. So if you qualify for income, you can contribute to a Roth. But if you're just taking money out for RMDs, it cannot go into a Roth, okay? If you're just taking money out for RMDs, you've got to convert that. Now, I said in the previous segment, the prime time to do that is from the time you're 59 and a half. What button goes off at 59 and a half? You can access your 401k and your IRA. Some people say, I heard you say in your head out there driving down the road that you say, how can I access my 401k if I'm 59 and a half? Most every 401k has an opportunity to have what's called in-service distributions. You're still in service to the company, but you can distribute it over into a regular IRA. Without no that 10% early withdrawal penalty, right? That's nope. why it's eliminated at 59 and a half. That's exactly right. No 10% withdrawal, no tax to move it into an IRA, and you can start building your own real retirement blueprint, your plan, not just the 401k. Now, after you get it over there at 59 and a half, and then we'll consider every year your income and your tax bracket, some of the things that we've talked about already on the show. And if you're in the middle of a tax bracket, think about it. If you're always going to be in the middle of that tax bracket, why not? Now, careful on the steering wheel there if you're driving. Why not pay a little more tax right now and pay it once for all and convert another $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 over into a Roth IRA paying the tax this year, paying more tax this year? I want to be perfectly clear because once it gets into that Roth IRA, it never gets taxed again in your family's life. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I mean. In your life, no. If you're married, your spouse inherits that Roth? No. Your kids inherit that Roth? No. It never gets taxed again. The growth doesn't get taxed again. You can do that from 59 and a half to 73 on every penny that you take out of that IRA that you don't use and spend. You can do a Roth conversion, get it into a Roth. Now, that's where you want your money. Mm -hmm. That's where you want it. You want it growing. And you want it growing tax free and you want it just growing just like it does in any other account, in any other investment, you, but it's in a Roth shelter. And so it grows tax free. Now we run, Kristen, what's called a tax report. We call it a tax report. Mm -hmm. People are amazed at if you wait and take it out the government's way and you wait till you're 73, you don't need it, you put it into an after tax and you get count, you get taxed on the growth on that again. People are amazed at how much tax they pay on a regular IRA in their lifetime and in their children's lifetime when they leave it and they have to take it out over 10 years. Mm -hmm. Versus if they do tax harvesting, or Roth conversions, where we do this process of taking a set amount out each year, paying more tax. You say, why would I want to pay more tax in 2024 and 2025? Because unless Congress passes a different law, the tax rates go back up in 2026 to the pre-Trump 
tax cuts that were, were passed in 2017. Mm -hmm. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 goes away in 2026. So the 10% bracket goes back to 12, the 12 goes back to 15, the 22 goes back to 25, the 24 goes back to 28. You're going to pay 2 to 4% more tax starting in 2026. So why not pay now while taxes are on sale? That's the argument for doing Roth conversions now. Yes. And Tom, right? you know, it's interesting. Not only are the brackets, if nothing, if Congress does nothing, right, the brackets are going to go back to where they were, but the income levels are changing as well as the standard deductions. I mean, it's very sneaky, but <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's scary when you look at the chart and you go, oh gosh, we've got two years before this is all going to change if nothing happens. I, I got to go back to what you started when you said right there. You said, if Congress does nothing, and I'm sitting here chuckling, okay? <laughs> if Congress does nothing, everything is normal, okay? Right, unfortunately, and, right? <laughs> right, because, uh, because in a split government where one side controls part and the other side controls the other part, you've got to have agreement, and there's not much agreement going on anywhere in Congress right now. So mm -hmm. those tax cuts are probably most likely going to go away, or... And just check this out. I'm not trying to get political. One of the candidates is proposing raising taxes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so please be aware that things could change and they could change drastically. Yeah. Well, I think with our nation's debt being over $34 trillion and counting, it's not a surprise to anyone that taxes could very well be going up. And we forget often because we hate taxes, right? It's never fun to pay right. them that we are currently in the third lowest tax brackets we've ever been in the history of our country. That's why this is a unique window of time to engage in some of these strategies that you're talking about. Exactly. And, you know, just, just to wrap up this deal about taking your RMDs, it's it's so exciting sometimes to see people take their RMDs and remodel a bathroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, seriously, when you're in my business of work, you want people to have a great retirement. And we've we've got people who take their RMDs and go to Europe on a on the tour, the yeah. trip of a lifetime. We've got people who take their RMDs and assist their kids in getting into a house and giving it to their family. I just about two weeks ago helped one of my clients that's been with me a long time take their RMDs and help one of their their grandsons get uh, you know a college education so that they don't have to go into debt mm -hmm. with student loans. And, yeah. So, you know, some people have to pay back student loans. So you, you don't want to commit to them and, and think that you're not going to have to pay them back. So there are all kinds of ways to take them. Mm -hmm. But you have to be, you know, I guess it's like the doctor's creed of first do no harm. Mm -hmm. When you're taking them, you have to first make sure you're not harming your own self and harming yourself from a tax standpoint or a cost standpoint. And then what you do with them, you can do all kinds of things. You can do all kinds of good with them if you get to that point and you don't need them. So here's, here's what we do. Part of a retirement blueprint is running that tax report, and it will show you uh, how much of that $800,000 IRA you have or that that 1.1 million you have in your 401k it will show you how much tax you're going to pay over your lifetime and your family's lifetime you need to come in and get a blueprint just to see that and to see how much money we could save you on taxes by having your own tax plan and again, that number to call to get started on your own complimentary retirement blueprint is 888-930-5609. This is going to be customized, personalized, individualized to you. You can't call up and say, hey, send me one of those blueprints. No, you got to come in and meet with the team and sit down, talk about your situation so that they can build the right retirement blueprint for you. 888-930-5609. We'll be back with more right after this. Call 888-930-5609 for your no-cost appointment. 888-930-5609. Do you know how much you might be paying in fees within your retirement accounts? Just 1% or 2% in hidden fees can eat into your savings and potentially hinder your ability to achieve your retirement goals. But how do you know if you're currently paying these hidden fees and how do you find them? Tom Mosley and the team of retirement planners at Mosley Wealth Management can help you find the fees within your investments and explore solutions designed to assist with minimizing them. Take control of your retirement savings so that you can work towards keeping more
more of your hard-earned money. Call for your very own complimentary retirement blueprint and fee review. Let us help work towards finding, exposing, and helping to eliminate those potential hidden fees for you. Call the Mosley Wealth Management team at 888-930-5609. That's 888-930-5609. Welcome back, Southern California. You are listening to Right on the Money with Tom Mosley, the founder and president of Mosley Wealth Management, and I'm your host, Kristen Oakley. We're having a great show today, continuing this conversation of everything you ever wanted to know about RMDs, those required minimum distributions, but we're afraid to ask. We've been talking a lot today about key ideas for how to take your RMDs properly, We want to switch gears now and talk about some of the investment options for your RMDs. So one of the things, Tom, that I know you are passionate about helping educate folks on is all the different investment products that are out there. And we always want to give a very fair and balanced perspective of the different things that are out there. One of the things that we love to educate people on are annuities. We often talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, but there are some good options when it comes to investing your RMDs by using annuities. So can you shed some light on that? Well, I hear the question out there in somebody's mind saying, why do I need an annuity? Why do I need to start an annuity when I'm 73 years old and I don't need my RMD? Okay, now now I want you to back up from that a little bit because I'm going to give you one scenario where we do use that sometime. If you are married, listen, if you're not married and you have a partner, if you're not married and you have a significant other that you want to take care of, I've seen people take their RMDs that they did not need Mm -hmm. and they started an annuity because they realized that the household income is going to go down one social security, maybe one pension when there's only one of those two. When there's only one of the partners, one of the significant others, one of the the spouses is gone, one is left, they're going to lose some of their income. So planning by, by stashing that money away into an annuity that would be there and just mount up and grow through the years, and you could contribute to it on a monthly basis, contribute to it on an annual basis, and that builds a pot of money for several things. Number one, if that surviving spouse or partner needs income in the future. Number two, what if one of the spouses goes or one of the partners goes into a nursing home Mm -hmm. and you need extra money? Well, that annuity could give you more guaranteed income. Every one of you, you know, you mentioned earlier, Kristen, that we don't have retirement blueprints sitting on a shelf. We start Mm -hmm. with a blank piece of paper. Every one of you has a potential need for more income in the future. What if, for instance, the Social Security Administration really can't pay 100% of the benefit in nine years in 2033, and they drop your Social Security by 21 to 25%, you're going to need more income. Mm -hmm. So, Let's move back to that scenario of you're 73 and you don't need the money coming out of an RMD, then maybe putting that into an income just to pad the potential need for income into an annuity might work for you. And I'm curious, Tom, about this. If you were to do that, let's say you take your RMDs and you invest them in an annuity, is that a taxable event or is that a way to also save yourself some in taxes by doing that? It saves you taxes through the years. Now, I want to be clear. You have to pay the tax on the RMD before it goes into the annuity. Okay. It goes into a non-qualified annuity, but that grows in a tax shelter. That is a tax shelter. It grows tax free. The annuity does not get taxed until you begin to take money out. And it's a, it's a last in first out. So the growth of that annuity is what's going to come out first. So you're going to get taxed on that first. But when you then get down to your basis as to what you've put into the annuity, that last few ten thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars does not get taxed because you've already paid the tax on the basis of it. Right. I love that last in first out LIFO, right? Right. (laughs) The acronym for that. So thank you for clarifying that. You know, another one, Tom, I'd love for you to talk about is something that a lot of Americans have never heard of before. 
Yet I have heard that several U.S. presidents have used this next option. 95% of congressmen and women have this option. It's something known as cash value life insurance, also known as indexed universal life, something known as a 7702 plan. It's very interesting to me that so many people in power have these set up for themselves, and most people have never heard of them. So let's exactly. talk about that option. It is definitely an option. It is cash value life insurance. It is the 77. You know, here's you said them. I'm repeating them. This thing has four different names. It must be important. You know what I yep. mean? Mm -hmm. Now, how does that impact you? I normally do not like to talk about life insurance with a 70 year old. Okay. Because life insurance is based on life expectancy, the cost of life insurance. And a 70 year old is no matter how you look at it closer to the end than a 20 year old in most normal cases. Mm -hmm. So the cost of life insurance is extremely high, but here's what we've run into with some of our clients. You don't have to buy it on yourself. You can still be the owner of a policy. You, I have clients who have taken their RMD, let me get to the real practical. They've taken their RMD and it's twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a year after they pay the tax on it. Mm -hmm. And they're putting that into a cash value life insurance. One client's putting it into cash value life insurance for their children. Mm -hmm. Another client is putting it into cash value life insurance for their grandchildren. They are still the owner of the policy, but the Life insurance person, the person that the life insurance is on is the child or the grandchildren. And then when they pass away, they pass ownership over to the child or to the grandchildren, and they have the, the tax advantage of the life insurance cash value. Life insurance cash value is tax free. Life insurance cash value can grow in a situation where zero up to 9% of a certain index like the S&P 500 and never have a downside with the cash value. That's why Congress loves it. Mm -hmm. That's why presidents love it. That's why accountants love it. That's why CPAs love it. But so many people that are out there don't understand it because there is a cost to the life insurance and it's a long-term thinking vehicle. But if you're thinking about really setting your grant kids up or really setting your kids up so that they can be financially independent, cash value life insurance might be something to talk about. You need to call in and say, I want to talk about cash value life insurance to pass on with my RMDs. There's not a lot of you out there that'll do that, but those of you who are wise need to look at it because it could really be an advantage to the long-term generational wealth that you're building in your family. Yes. And that is something that a lot of folks are more interested in these days, trying to figure out how to do it. So I'm really really glad we're, we're talking about it, Tom, because it is very fascinating that, again, so many people who are in our leadership of our government have these. Why don't more Americans have it too? Right, exactly. So here's the other thing. Might they change the rules on IRAs? They do all the time. Might they change the rules on Roth IRAs? They, they've done it and they'll do it all the time. Might they change the rules on a investment plan that they've got their own retirement in? <laughs> right. Probably not. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> That's a very good point for sure. Well, I know we have a lot of other things on this list for investment options. We might even have to do another show where we get into more of these, but anything else you want to highlight? Well, let me just rattle off some some things. You you could reinvest the money in an after-tax brokerage account. You're going to pay tax on the capital gains within there. Some people that we work with, we put sometimes their RMDs that they don't need into an after-tax brokerage account that's that's invested in dividend-paying stock. And uh, we've got a really good portfolio that uh, not only grows, not only has equity growth, but it also uh, pays a dividend, um, you know, sometimes four, almost five percent every single year of dividend paying stock. Uh, sometimes I've got people who are putting their money into muni bonds, which are also, you know, once you pay tax on something, Kristen, you really don't want to get your nose bloodied again right. by putting it into something that you have to pay a lot of tax on. So muni bonds are an option for some people. Uh, sometimes people just invest them in a low cost index fund and they just let it get seasick with the market going up and down, but they're there. Some people are more risk averse. So they take the money and they put it in a high yield savings account. Some of those are paying really super well right now, or even a CD. 
Um, if the chunk is large enough, you might want to invest in real estate or sometimes tax managed funds, Siri, you know, anything that's out there, you know, savings bonds, even mm -hmm. a lot of people that are 70 and 80 years old still like savings bonds. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you like. But but what we do when we go through a retirement blueprint is we first of all start with income and, in, and inflation and investments. And then number four, we talk about taxes and that's where RMDs come in, the fourth component of a retirement blueprint. The fifth is healthcare, the sixth is legacy. But when we're centering on taxes, where we can help you is we can run a tax report on your IRA, your 401k to show you how much tax you could end up paying if you just play it out the way the government has it laid out for you. You probably are not going to want to do that. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to want to do some forward looking macro tax planning through the years so that you begin to convert that IRA and 401k into a Roth over a period of time. Yes, pay the tax now because most people think taxes are lower now than they'll be in the future. All of these are just part, it's just centering on one part of what we do when you pick up the phone, dial up, We've got six offices spread all over Southern California. You meet with one of our six all-star fiduciary advisors, and we build you a retirement blueprint. One element of that, one room of that entire blueprint it has to do with taxes and has to do with RMDs. We can help you. We can save you money. We can get you into a position where your retirement money will be tax-free but you've got to take the effort to call in and get on our schedule and meet with us. And I know, Tom, that there are folks listening who are now saying, yes, please help me. I, I wasn't even aware of some of these strategies. Maybe we've brought up other things today that just really resonate with you. You know, and maybe you just want to get a second opinion. That's great, too. You can't get a second opinion from the same person who gave you the first. So this is our invitation to you. For no cost, no charge, no obligation, we invite you to pick up the phone, call and schedule your appointment to come in and start receiving your very own personalized retirement blueprint. That number to call is 888-930-5609. Hey, thanks so much for joining us this weekend. We really appreciate you being here. Be safe, be happy, be blessed. And we look forward to being back with you next week here on Right on the Money with Tom Mosley. Tom Mosley and the team have helped thousands of folks like you in Southern California plan for their retirement. Now make the call yourself. 888-930-5609. That's 888-930-5609. Investment advisory services offered by duly registered individuals through Mosley Wealth Management Incorporated. Mosley Wealth Management and Mosley Insurance and Financial Services are affiliated companies by common ownership license number OB61811. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refers to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength claims paying ability of the issuing carrier. This content is intended for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the needs of an individual situation. All hypothetical examples are provided for illustrative purposes only. They do not represent real-life scenarios. Mosley Insurance and Financial Services, nor its agents or representatives, may give tax or legal advice. Individuals should consult with a qualified professional for guidance before making any investment decisions. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. Some of the information provided may be from one or more third parties, which we believe to be reliable sources, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Mosley Insurance and Financial Services.